the outcome of education and learning is what matters most. And that outcome should actually be happy people who can use their skills to lead happy lives. That's all education should be about. I will be talking about how technology will revolutionize learning in two ways. It will revolutionize how we have access to learning, but it will also revolutionize how and what we should learn. There is an ongoing debate globally about whether technology should be used in classrooms and how it should be used in classrooms. There are people who contradict this. There are people who say or ask the question, does this work? Is this better or is this worse? But the, the underlying big question is why aren't we seeing a revolution? Why isn't there a change that is driven? Why aren't people marching on the streets? Because the debate of technology has been going on within education for as long as we know. In the 19th century, there was discussion about what would happen if we would run out of paper, because paper was being introduced into the classrooms. Well, there were people who were saying chalkboards, 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 but paper, it won. And then in this picture by a, uh, a French futurist, you see a person from a lower social class, you can tell it from his clothing, using a machine that distills knowledge through wires into the heads of people. This didn't happen, did it? Now, if you want to start a revolution, the revolution never is started by the people who maintain or develop the system. No. And that is why we need to look somewhere else to start the revolution. This is me with graduates from the fifth grade in Mexico where we conducted research with University Tech de Monterrey about what is the outcome, the learning outcomes of people if they use mobile devices in classrooms. And the results were excellent. 46% better learning results out of six weeks of usage in the classroom. Magnificent. On national level, 10 to 12% better results after just six weeks. Now, in any other industry, this would have led to immediate usage across the world, but in the education industry, nah, nothing happened. Why was that? You know what? Luckily, we don't have to worry about that. We know that technology will change the way we access learning. It will dramatically change how we can learn and how we can be educated. All we have to do is look at what happened to distance work. In the 1990s, if you wanted to work in, 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 the, in, in, in your office and you said, I want to take a distance work, use the internet or email to work, the, the superiors back then, because of the lack of control, they said, no, you don't do it. Because they thought that distance work was just another type of vacation. This, you know, I remember, no, 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 don't do it. But look at what we're doing today. Every professional in the world is perfectly capable of working somewhere in a cafe, in a park, and be very productive, be very happy. And this is enabled by new technologies and services that use this. Wow. The offices of the world are empty. And you do not have to be Nostradamus or Jules Verne to predict that the same will happen to the classroom. Our ability to use technologies in the future to access learning will enable us, the learners, to gather anywhere we want. Think about that. The school will become your school. The university can move to the streets. If it's raining, you're inside. If it is sunny, you're outside. You can choose because you have access to all the knowledge and all the wisdom that you ever, we ever have gathered. So having solved this access problem, it will be solved by time, let's look at the more important thing, the what 
of education that will be changed by technology and through technologies. And to understand that, we have to look at the fundamentals of under the design of our today's educational system. In the 19th century, when factories were there and, and the smoke was actually the, the token of success and growth, that was when our design, the educational system today was designed. That was when the factories were waiting for more qualified workforce, doing standardized work and actually doing, having standardized skills. That was why our educational system is focused on delivering standardized outcomes at a standardized rate. But the world has changed. The world has become so different that we need to look at the motivations of, for example, Buzz Aldrin. The second man on the face of the moon here on the cover of MIT's Technology Review says, we humans have stopped using technology to solve big problems, and we have given him Facebook. And we have actually, we have Facebook, but we haven't been able to teach the women of the world to keep their babies alive. We have SMS, yes, but you know what? Not everybody can read. And that needs to be changed. We must change that. And we must change that by looking into the future and what will happen in the future and let future decide what needs to be taught and what needs to be learned. And that something is scary. Because all sciences, since the publications by Club of Rome in the 70s, are saying that the end is near. We are over-consuming our planet's resources. Jan Rotmans, a Dutch researcher in systemic change, says that this transition from old economy to a new economy, from industrial revolution to a digitized world, will cause 60% of today's companies to collapse within the two decades. That means that 60% of the jobs of the world will disappear. I, as a Finn, have experienced the effect of so-called systemic crisis. In the early 1990s, when Soviet Union collapsed, overnight one-third of our exports and foreign trade vanished. Our banking system collapsed because of the high interest rate, and one-third of the small mid-sized enterprises of Finland vanished. Our country was in bankruptcy. What happened? Our nation understood that the only ability and capability to survive into the future is to relearn what we need to learn. And that is how our country became, in just 15 years, the top of all the lists in the world, you know, from innovation to PISA results in education. But we Finns were quite stubborn, so we had to take another blow to understand what it really means. And if you look at what happened with the demise of Nokia, once again, just a few years after the crisis was solved, one third, once again, of our research and development vanished. 20% of our foreign trade vanished. Now, taking those two blows makes you wonder, is that what the world and the humanity needs to survive? And I say yes. We need to understand that unemployment is the worst enemy of our world. Because with rise in unemployment, societies become unstable. We need more jobs to compensate the three billion jobs we will lose. And who creates those jobs? Let me tell you, those jobs, those three billion jobs, are in companies that haven't been founded yet. Because all new jobs are started in companies that are new companies. According to Kaufman Foundation, only companies that are younger than five years create new jobs. That means, in order to compensate the three billion jobs we will lose, we need to educate a lot of people. A lot of people need to learn how to fund, found, start those companies and how to fail in order to succeed. That change, that number of those millions of founders is far too much for the current entrepreneurial education system.
That is why we need to use the mobile devices to spread the learning. Because if we do not use that, that, that scaling effect of mobile technologies, we will never achieve the results we require to survive. And that is what I'm asking of you. We all know that there is a revolution that needs to be started. But you know what? A revolution isn't started by something. It is started by someone. I'm asking you today to join that revolution by being that revolution. Thank you.